thing with Jay-Z, I think, Jay-Z is smart. Where a lot of these guys, they're not up to date with the influence they have. And let me break it down. So, like, even to the, the Wines, the Harvey, and you know what I mean? Everybody, they had connections with powerful people who were powerful at that time. As time goes by, people pass, power changes hands. Yes, they may have connects, but they weren't as powerful as they were five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So you see, people like Diddy, they have a lot of connects with people who used to be. So maybe some now, you know. Jay-Z, every year, man, Jay-Z ch shaking new hands. Jay-Z changing his circle. He got new friends. Jay-Z kind, I don't want to say he's smart, but he keeps up to trend with who's powerful and who can, you know, do what they need to do. So trust me, every year Jay-Z is, while everybody sticks in the past, Jay-Z is like, nah, 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 nah. So it makes me know as well too, bro, you must have a few skeletons in the closet. You know, it is what it is. But hey, I don't like to be... Let me see what uh, my boys Evy here say. They say to become a billionaire, you gotta screw over a lot of people. Kind of like how Marcus stole Facebook, how William Gates, the sociopath, stole a bunch of Apple's ideas. Y'all all know Elon B. Wilin, and none other than the Jigga Man, who today we're gonna use as an example. Now, this is no shade to Jay Z, he's just a perfect example because when he was coming up, he said he was a hustler. To be a billionaire, you gotta hustle, scam, bamboozle, and a lot of street hustling kind of connects to business. Now, Jay-Z had a problem, because remember, I just said to be a billionaire, you gotta screw over a lot of people. Some can see that as, ah, oh, this guy's a jerk. But Jay-Z is the face of his business. Like he says, I'm a business comma man. If you don't know how your commas work, he's basically saying he's a business. Now, if you are the business, your stocks can go up and down depending on you. Let me put it to you this way. If Elon Musk was this super nice guy who gave to charity all the time and he bought Twitter and it was failing, people would be like, man, that's tough for Elon. And a lot of people will probably help him out. Now we all know that's not Elon Musk. So people just laugh at him as Twitter crashes and burns and prays for his downfall. Now let's see how Jay-Z toes this balance perfectly with Tidal. Now, if you don't know, Tidal was this uh, music Tidal service that Jay-Z bought a while ago. He said, yo, this is gonna be the biggest thing in streaming. Spoiler alert, it wasn't. Now, why Jay-Z started right. Tidal was actually a pretty good reason. Streaming platforms are not paying artists. So if he makes Tidal and he promotes Tidal, pays artists a whole bunch of money, people will love Tidal. And he actually did this by giving the most amount of revenue to artists. And he also made this whole grand production where a bunch of famous musicians came on stage signing, we own part of Tidal. Jay-Z gave it to us. Everyone's like, whoa! Jay-Z like, so y'all finna sign up for Tidal? Everyone's like, no. no. Jay-Z said, but why? <laughs> they said, cause I have Spotify already. But Jay-Z, you a good dude. He underestimated the fact that people were like, yo, Beyonce would be all right if I just go on Spotify. She's a millionaire. Ain't that right, yeah. Jay-Z? Jay-Z said, well, now you can only get her album on Tidal. Now what? People were like, mm, I don't really like that. And yeah. people just listened to another artist. It wasn't that deep. But at this point, people did not like Jay-Z. He had so much stock with the people that people were just giving him the benefit of the doubt. They're like, oh, he's a businessman. He's just trying to make a business move. It's business annoying, but sure. Us, now, there was yeah. a few more album exclusives. I, I don't but even then, want to say that's God. business. Let me pause there, yeah? But he's a businessman. But he's a businessman who only interest is in himself, his brand, his wife. Which is fear. As a family man, you need to be only worried about yourself and your kids you know what i'm saying that's true but in hip-hop i don't want to hear that bs that's a bunch of crap yeah jay-z has ended so many careers just so that he could be number one be crowned the king of new york man went to death jam and literally shelved everybody got rid of everybody and we had no more hip-hop coming out in new york I'll never forget that when he took over Def Jam. I was like, bruv, Russell Simmons, I know you're going through your shit, but you went and sold Def Jam to him? Like, and I know Dame Dash and him and the whole story, like, I understand. You know, I understand that. He needs to do better with himself. But he was a very selfish, greedy guy where DMX, meth, anybody who kind of showed any kind of competition to him, he made sure to get you out of there. And I was just, as a hip-hop fan, I was just like, yo, fam. Nah, bro. No. You eliminate the competition and not on the mic? Come on, even try to get Nas out how many times? Kanye West dropped his highly anticipated The Life of Pablo on Tidal. 
exclusively. Now, people weren't tripping that Kanye's album was exclusively on Tidal. I think like 300 million people paid the subscription fee to listen to the album. Then a week later, Kanye drops the album on Apple Music. Everyone who paid the Tidal subscription felt scammed because the album was exclusively supposed to be released on Tidal. In fact, Tidal gets sued and it's starting to look really bad because at this point, people are only buying into this because Jay-Z is the savvy businessman and it's okay. But now it just seems Jay-Z, remember, he's the face of the business, is forcing people to pay to listen to their favorite artists and his business is failing. Maybe he's not that business that. So his reputation is taking a slight dip. So Jay-Z goes, oh snap, it's time to jump shit. Mm -hmm. So he hits up his friend, Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey founded Twitter. He's like, yo, Jack, you want to come on my yacht? Jack goes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, me? Of course. Rich people still think famous people are famous. So Jack goes on vacation with Jay-Z. Jack sees Beyonce. He goes, that Beyonce? Jay-Z goes, yup. Hey, you want to buy Tidal? Jack goes, you're failing music service? Jay-Z said, now who said it's failing? Jack said, everybody online? Jay-Z goes, well, you can't believe everything you read. So Jack goes over to his shareholders and tells them, yo, we're buying Tidal. They go, Jay-Z's failing music service? Jack said, now who said it's failing? They said these legal documents that Tidal is obligated to show us, showing that they're failing. Jack said, well, you can't believe everything you read. We buying it for 300 million. They go, what the? They buy it. Jack's the boss. Now, Tidal, of course, fails, but it had people questioning, why did Jack do this? Because even though Jay-Z is Jay-Z, this is ridiculous. The shareholders thought the same thing, so they sue Jack. And here's where it starts to get wicked. There's something I forgot to tell you. A part of the deal where Jack and his company paid 300 million for title was Jay-Z, listen closely, gets on the board of directors for Jack's company. The board and the shareholders were like, what, what did they? Jay-Z said, what, 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 what did Jigga, I'm here now. So people were suspicious, including the judge. Judge was like, yo, so is he just like your friend and you just helped him out? Jack goes, no, I just thought it was a pretty good idea. The judge goes, well, you got the bag and fumbled it. Jack goes, I'm sorry? The judge goes, you got the bag and fumbled it. Jack goes, okay, I won't fumble the bag next time. My fault, judge. Judge goes, great, you're free to go. The shareholders were like, hey, yo. But in the judge's words, it's not criminal to make a bad business decision. In fact, I think the judge said a terrible business decision. The judge was like, this transaction was done in bad faith but it didn't break the law. And now it's time for our mm. story break with today's sponsor, Aura. Aura is able hey. to monitor your data across billions of data points uh, to alert you if you're at risk of identity theft. This year's seen an especially high number of data breaches from huge companies you might know like Dell who numbers and most importantly, social security. So if you want to keep your personal data safe, you can go to Aura.com billion. Yeah. The shareholders screwed because they lost a bunch of money, but Jack is here. First things first, Jay-Z, made it out got 300 million dollars and i believe this was what pushed him to a billion the shareholders okay. screwed because they oh. lost a bunch of money but jack is is that where he got the money that pushed him up bro you see what i'm saying this guy is so snaky and sly bro yeah everything is about i can't hate a guy for making everything about making himself better but at, at whose cost at what cost you know I know he sold his soul a long time ago. This is where it gets kind of interesting. People either think Jack got screwed or he was in on this with Jay-Z all along. I mean, Meaning Jay-Z and Jack screwed over the businessman. You mm -hmm. keeping up so far? So basically mm -hmm. Jack pays some of that 300 million to Jay-Z, which he can totally afford. Jack hangs out with Jay-Z, they swap ideas, they become friends and continue to work together when it comes to making a bunch of money in the future. Win-win for both of them. Shareholders get none of this with Jay-Z and they just lose money. An NYU yeah. business professor called this an expensive tab to hang out with Jay-Z. Now, how does this make Jay-Z the hustler? Well, he basically sold himself instead of title. When he knew the business was failing, he just went into the old hustler's playbook. Just pretend it's not failing and then sell it to a sucker. At first, he tried to sell it by pretending the number of subscribers mm. were bigger than they were. They did actual projections on his numbers and they're like, bro, you're like 10 times below what you said you're doing. Mm. Jay-Z's like, let me see those numbers again. Oh. Companies were like, oh no, Jay-Z was like, but I'm Jay-Z though. Again, in comes Jack Dorsey. Jay-Z either hustles Jack or Jay and Jack hustle the shareholders. Anyway, jay is actually not a stranger to these business tactics, pretending a product is good when it's eh. He's done this with his alcohol company, his other alcohol company, his clothing brand, pretty much a lot of things he has his hand in business for. Now, this isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's basically what a majority of commercials are. Out it's why companies them. hire celebrities to like use their stuff. Except Jay-Z is both the company and the celebrity. Now, let's take things a step further 
further and talk about how Jay-Z first came into the rap game. He actually used this exact same strategy to become famous. Pretending something's amazing, it's actually worth nothing, mm. but getting big companies to buy into it. And okay. that something was his record label, Rockefeller Records. Now, I made this part of the video another day and I'm too lazy to film it over, so here you go. Now, Jay-Z's no stranger to this oh, business yeah, strategy. Yeah, in fact, he- I'm gonna go look at this on my own time. I wanna see what he says about this, cause he's covering in some issue. But he's always been like this though. Use, abuse, sell, move on. He don't care who he stamps on, but you know, that's... I don't want to point a finger at him directly because, you know, you are a product of what they make. Like, he, this was done to him in the beginning, you know? It's being done to everyone, you know? So people come in and don't try to break the cycle. They just continue it. Like, oh, I had it done to me for like 15 years. I'm bringing in my artists. I might as well make sure that I put them in a 360 deal and get all the money as well too because they took all of mine. It's, it's, yeah, man. He did this when he first started coming up as a rapper. As Jay-Z says, he's a hustler from the streets. When he learned that you can hustle legally, he said, oh, snap. So he went to record labels and said, yo, I'm about to be the biggest thing. Here's my, they said, who are you? He said, like I was saying, I'm Jay-Z. I'm about to be, they said, Jay-Z said, y'all didn't even listen to my album yet. And the funny thing is, Jay-Z had a legendary album on his hands, but nobody was trying to hear it. They said, we good, Jazzy. He said, first of all, my name is Jay-Z. Second of all, y'all gonna see. So Jay-Z had a problem. Nobody was trying to sign him. So Jay-Z does what he knows best, hustles. He gets his two friends, Dame Dash and Biggs Burke, and they create their own independent record label called Rockefeller Records. They didn't have no money really. At least not enough to go on crazy tours or have like a whole album release, mm. but they did have some cash from selling. So what did they do? They <laughs> spent it on clothes, Dame jewelry, Dash. cars, all that. Now from the outside looking in, it Dame looks financially Dash. irresponsible, but they did this for a reason. Remember the strategy, make the business look good and people buy into it. Well, the business in this case is the record label they started. They was mm. walking in the club, spending money, all that. People was like, who this? Somebody would slide in and be like, that's Jay-Z and them from Rockefeller Records. They'd be like, who are you? Don't worry about that. Jay-Z, y'all ain't heard of Jay-Z? They'd be yeah. like, no, nah, should I have? Dude would slide out and be like, y'all missing out. They paid the DJ to call their name. That's Jay-Z and them from Rockefeller Records. And they were looking like a big deal. And mm. plus, remember, the album and the music was really good. In reality, they're selling the music out the trunk of their car. So the music starts getting out there. Record labels are like, yo, who is this Jay-Z from Rockefeller Records? Jay-Z. Jay-Z like, huh? They said, um, you want to sign to our record label? Jay-Z be like, no, I'm already signed to Rockefeller Records. Record mm -hmm. labels are like, well, we usually give artists 5% of their own music. What if we give you 10? Record labels are a scam too. One mm -hmm. of the legal scams. Jay-Z said 50-50. Record label said 50 what? Jay-Z would be like, okay, fine. They'd be like, wait, 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 wait. Universal eventually signs with a 50-50 deal with mm. Rockefeller Records, which was insane at the time, especially because he only did this by pretending he was bigger than he was. Now, a lot of times in scams, people will pretend they're bigger than they are and the other party will get nothing. Right. Like what Jay-Z did in the whole title thing. Jay when people be talking about numbers don't lie. When it comes to Jay-Z, what numbers? What numbers are we talking about? What numbers? I'm not, I'm not trying to take away from his contribution to hip-hop. Jay-Z, man, Jay-Z, Jay-Z is like, Jay-Z is serious. You know what I'm saying? Like, Jay-Z should be on Mount Rushmore. At the same time, though, he ain't my top three. Not even my top five. He ain't my top ten. You know what I'm saying? But Jay-Z has done a lot of damage as well to hip-hop. Like, I ain't forgetting for what he did with X. I think I hold that to heart, bro, with DMX, bro. Like, I was just... You know what I mean? I was... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's wrong. Jay-Z got 300 million, Jack Dorsey got sued. But in this case, even though Jay-Z finessed yep, a 50-50 deal, his music was actually really good. So Universal gets a big payout because of it. This gives him a lot of credibility, which later allowed him to snake one of his friends that I told you about earlier, Dame Dash. Now saying that he snaked him is debatable. Dame Dash was kind of a loose cannon and he was making Jay-Z look really bad, but that's a story for another day. Actually, I touched on that story. I'll probably put the video somewhere up here. Now, at the end of the day, as the business people say, it's just business. I would turn up if I got hustled like this, but yeah. I guess that's why I'm not a businessman. It takes a certain mind to be able to screw people over and just be okay with it. For the majority of us, they would probably just ring us ring us dry. And all the judge would probably say is, like the judge said to Jack's shareholders, <laughs> no, did he? they got lit. Moment. What Jack and Jay-Z did to y'all was certainly in bad faith. 
but don't hate the player, hate the game. Anyway, let me end this video by saying I appreciate every single one of y'all that be subscribing. If you're not subscribing, then subscribe yeah. right now and keep an eye out for live content on like, Twitter. Like, like real talking, bro. This is what I'm trying to say. Like, a lot of people think the next person that's going to come down with Diddy is going to be Jay. But um, Jay, I think, got too many friends in the right places where I have a feeling Jay might have sold out Diddy just so he could save himself. Because what's going on right now, I just don't think that he don't know nothing about. I know he... Well, a lot of people were at that, um, that party. Everybody been saying this freak off, freak off. Brother was an OG party. Well, let's just be real with ourselves. Yeah, freak off this, freak off that. What's this, this new modern day age name given to an OG? It was an OG. Well, what the hell, bro? But yeah, like, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Hey, everybody's judgment must come one day.